Bless up. Greetings. I am Brother Spence. Once again, in the lion's den. Peace and blessings, brother and sister. On this blessed eve, November the 23rd, 2021. Gregorically speaking. Um, this is a reflection of last week's Torah portion reading. Or last week's Torah portion meditation in the divine scriptures. So we're not covering the whole Torah portion, just a, a particular highlight, somewhat of a spiritual or prophetical highlight through a few verses within the Torah portion. Now we turn to the book of Better Sheet or Genesis. So grab your Bibles, those who partake in this, those who take interest in seeking knowledge, seeking that higher truth. That's right. You're seeking that higher truth through faith, through reverence, through obedience to Jah's will. True reverence to Hashem's will. Some say true reverence or submission to you know, God's will or Allah's will or Jah's will. Your heart. So what are, what are these divine messages? That we meditate in these scriptures. We meditate day and night in these scriptures. Through the Torah. From the original Hebrew scriptures. All throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. To the modern day Bible. To the Quran. And the Quran. And the Arabic scriptures. Tell us to go back and read the Torah. And the gospel. Within the Bible. You know what are. What are these divine messages that our Heavenly Father, the omnipotent Creator, the one true Allah or the true living Elohim of Israel, true ethnic Yasharal, and of all nations? What is our Father, the Most High Jah, Yahweh Elohim, or Yahweh Elohim, revealing to us through these scriptures? Let's go back and focus on the incident with a great prophet, that great patriarch, and that great prophet, Ya'akam, or Jacob, as we properly say in the complete translation from the Hebrew pronunciation to the modern day English. Ya'akam, or Jacob, son of Abraham, son of Isaac, or Yitzhak, whose name is Ya'akam. Or Jacob, in most of our modern day English translations within the Bible, within the modern day JPS Tanakh, from Hebrew to English, we have that covenant through Abraham. Some say Ibrahim or Abraham through Yitzhak, in his original Hebrew name, Yitzhak or Isaac, then Yaakov or Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was another seed of the great prophet Abraham or Abraham through Ishmael, also written and recorded in this Torah of life, in this great book of life. Let us go to Genesis chapter 32, beginning in verse 24. Grab your Bibles and your Tanakhs, your Torah scriptures at this time. Genesis 32, verse 24. And Yaakov, or Jacob, was left alone. Jacob was left alone. And a man, capital M-A-N in translation from the original Hebrew to English. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day, until sundown. He wondered, what could this be? And when he saw that he did not overcome him, verse 25, when he... The man who we see in verses to come as an angel 
the appearance of physical man, but we are we as mankind, both men and women, but first the men are created in the original likeness and image of Ha Elohim or the Alahayim, right? Of Almighty God and the angels. The Most High Jah, the omnipotent Father and his angels, especially the supreme angel of the presence, the supreme angel, or the angel named Yahweh, or named Yahweh, Jehovah. So we see that the supreme angel, or this man, saw that he did not overcome him, speaking of Jacob or Yaakov. Now, you're thinking, what? An average man, no matter how strong, no matter how fierce or mighty in the flesh, could overcome an average rank divine angel, especially the supreme angel of the presence. God forbid. But we see, you know, this means something different because the man, or that supreme angel of the name, the angel named Yahweh or Yahweh, saw that he did not overcome him. He touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Yaakov's hip, or the socket of Jacob's hip, was dislocated as he wrestled with him, even physically. This is clear evidence that, of course, the supreme angel of the presence and the physical appearance of man manifested into this physical realm on this earth. Let Jacob know. He let, he let Yaakov know. I can easily just touch the socket of your hip and boom, you're dislocated. You're crippled. I could crush you within a second, but I'm letting you hold on to me in this spiritual and in this physical wrestling match but pause for the cause right there let us proceed it says when he saw that he did not overcome him he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Yaakov's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him verse 26 and he said let me go for the day breaks but he said I am not letting you go until you have blessed me. So the angel said, let me go for the day breaks. You know, how much endurance do you think you really have? Been wrestling with me. You can't really overcome me physically. So I've already touched your, your hip. I've already touched the socket of your hip and your whole hip has been dislocated and you're still holding on trying to fight against me and wrestle. He says, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, Jacob said, or Yaakov said, I am not letting you go until you have blessed me. Verse 27. So he asked him, what is your name? And he said, Yaakov, or he said, Jacob, in that translation. Verse 28. And he said, or the angel said, the man said, your name is no longer called Yaakov, but Yasharel. In other words, your name is no longer called Jacob, but Israel, who wrestles with Elohim to a friend of Ha Elohim, friend of God, the children of El Shaddai. Because you have striven with Ha Elohim, you have striven with God and with men, and have overcome. Hallelujah. Verse 29. And Yaakov asked him, saying, You know, Jacob is puzzled. He asked him, saying, Please let me know your name. Let me know your Shem. And he said, Why do you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob, or Yaakov, received the blessing, the spiritual blessing. But he won. This so-called wrestling match. He strove with the angel. He would strive with the angel. In 
and overcome. Why? How? All these basic questions pop up in your head at this point when you take the time to meditate in these verses, in the scripture. You know, he's asking Jacob, <clears throat> his own servant, why do you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. Um, an obvious hint. Other, others would say a very subtle hit or hint, Salika. Others, others might say a very subtle hint or an obvious hint that the angel of the name, the angel of Hashem, makes it obvious to Jacob that he knows who he is as the supreme angel. I've striven with the angel of the name, the angel of Elohim, and overcome. Well, how would Jacob or how would Yaakov overcome an angel, especially that high rank angel of the name? And the lightness in which Ha-Elohim, or which the Most High Jah, makes himself known to man on this earth, in this physical realm. That other prophets and the patriarchs saw with their physical eye. Even the great prophet Moshe, or most of us know as the great prophet Moses, or Musa, was able to talk to that presence of Elohim in the temple. In the tabernacle, the holiest of all holies, as we pronounce in the English, the holiest of all holies. But uh, there was a way in which Ha Elohim, in which the Most High Jah, the pre incarnate, must I say, the pre incarnate Yahshua, some pronounce the pre incarnate Yahushua or Jesus Christ, as Messiah. In that first advent, before that first incarnation, way before that, this is the Torah, the days of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are the days of, of Yaakov walking the earth in his time as the great prophet, in which that covenant, that promise was made through his seed, through his grandfather, Abraham, through his father, or his biological father, Isaac. Or Yitzhak, and then through him, Jacob, whose name is changed to Israel, because he did not let go. We see the basic revelation and divine message. We cannot let go in our faith, in our true faith walk within this present life on earth. I know it's hard for all of us universally as, as, as people, as human beings. This present life on this earth, in this physical realm, is hard for many people. At the same time, it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's a blessing that we're all here, alive, spiritually and, and physically, right here in this time. We're here for a reason. That's obvious. And the spiritual darkness and wickedness in this present day of age... In this present earth age and especially in this whole wicked Babylon system in these last of last days of Yahweh's judgments or the rightful judgments of the Most High Jah through Hashem's rightful wrath and judgment we still have his infinite grace and mercy through his steadfast love and salvation that life force the basic foundation of Jala, every breath of life we take is a blessing. Having access to his love and salvation, or Hashem Yeshua, or in the name of Jesus Christ, is a blessing. Even more so through the King of Kings and Christ, is a blessing. In fulfillment of the Torah and the prophets. So here we are. So, you know, we cannot let go of our faith once we've taken the time to really take that full leap of faith. We've taken many steps towards our Heavenly Father, towards our Elohim, towards the one true living God, the omnipotent creator, the Almighty One, and through His Son, Yahshua HaMashiach, and through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, through Jesus Christ, the Son, in the first advent, through Him, 
as our Lord and Savior, born again, begotten again, spiritually, to be born again sons of the Most High Jah. We too are called to be born again sons and daughters of the Most High, the living Elohim through Messiah, not Antichrist Jesus, but through the true Christ, whose name is Jesus Christos, through the true Christos, or the true Messiah, whose name is Yahushua or Yahshua, meaning Yahweh salvation or Jehovah is salvation, Joshua, Yahshua, Jah is salvation. So, this is even more foundational to those of I and I who recognize Messiah, the return Messiah in the second advent through his majesty. So, we proceed. It says, Yaakov or Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Some pronounce Peniel or Peniel. For I have seen Elohim, I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. It was only through that extensive, or should I say that, that extended mercy of Hashem, that extended mercy of the Most High back then, even through Jah's grace and mercy, even through his love and salvation back then, as we have today through Messiah. Back then, the high-level prophets and the patriarchs knew that they saw the, the manifestation of both the spiritual or physical manifestation of the angel, that supreme angel of the presence. Whether he came in the presence of two other men or two other supreme angels in the physical appearance of men manifested to the earth or on the solo tip and even have a wrestling match with his grandson, Jacob. They knew that was a privilege that they could see that manifestation, that memora of Elohim, and still live. It says, once again, Jacob or Yaakov called the name of that place where he wrestled with the angel Peniel. Now we see that obvious connection through other terms, other mystical and cosmic coincidences, other languages and terminology to the pineal gland within the human brain that we say scientifically the pineal or pineal gland in which we develop those receptors those spiritual receptors to the Ruach HaKodesh or that Holy Spirit that true Womemphis Caduce that life force we say in biblical terms is the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKodesh that set apart spirit or the irate within, many other types of fulfilled Israelites and elect Rastafari, amongst the Nazarene, amongst the Nazarites as well, even the dreadlock Rastas, as well as fellow the bald head Rastas as, as Nazarene and fulfilled Israelites and you know true Orthodox Christians. As the true Beta Christian, we recognize that connection as well as those of that same connection in ancient Kemet. The ancient Kemet go back to the earlier roots, the deeper Afro-Semitic roots, going back to Ethiopia, the ancient land of Cush, as we also see from the same original Hebrew scriptures in the Bible, in the foundation of Torah. So I strive to connect the dots. Other people want to be tribalistic and say, no, well, we'll say this versus that, this type of Christianity versus that type of Christianity this version of Islam versus this version of Islamism or that version of Islamism as opposed to true Islam as a way of life or a true Judaism as a way of life. Instead of Judaism and its fulfillment through Messiah, let's focus on Judaism. No, we, we, we burn out the ism and schisms. We don't deal with ism and schisms, but fulfill Judaism as a way of life or true Islam as a way of life. We get into that metaphysics um, the I self Lord and Master in um, in relation to knowledge of self as well as knowledge of Elohim. Now, knowledge of that higher Elohim, we are called to be divine beings in His likeness. Even the 
the human brain is considered an Elohim, that connection. We are gods. We are divine beings, should I say. We are divine beings in the lightness of Ha Elohim, of Almighty God and the angels, as above, so below, from within. The eyes, so our blessed Lord and Savior, as Messiah, the one true prophet of all prophets, and the Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, with Jesus Christ, the first advent, is our Lord and Savior as well. As well as I and I, Lord and Savior and elder brother, Jesus Christ, whose name is Yeshua HaMashiach, not Antichrist Jesus. We see the devil, the angel Satan, or the angel named Satan, and the fallen ones come as angels of light. They're really fallen angels of darkness with demonic spirits. They conjure up these demonic spirits. You know, you see a lot of evil things happening in the earth right now. That's part of the wicked agenda of this Babylon matrix. Okay. What it means to strive within ourselves as divine beings, we see in Tehillim or Psalms 82, verse 6. Thus saith the Most High Yahuwah, or thus saith Hashem, I say you are gods. I say you are divine beings. Nevertheless, you shall fall like any mortal, die like any prince. Because of the falling away of mankind, even as divine beings, we are both divine beings as human beings. We have our shortcomings because of the falling away of grace. This does not, this does not mean that we don't have that ability as divine beings to tap into that oneness through the omnipotent creator that we call the forest. You know, that omnipotent creator we call the force. In Star Wars, you know, Ja Force, that life force, that energetic force that abides within us and all around us. You know, even Star Wars and different movie different movies and entertainment that we grew up watching as children. Even the little action figures. Little, the little Star Wars action figures and Millennium Falcon and all that stuff was meant to, you know, yes, it was meant to entertain us as children and as adults, even grown adults twice my age have the little action figures and the movies. Star Wars is a very mystical, uh, as well as a spiritual um, revelation, a prophecy that was actually wrapped up in a little pretty package that we call a script. By George Lucas, you know he was into this science fiction. He had he had a spiritual side. You know George Lucas had a spiritual side to him that he kind of combined with science fiction and imagination, and conspiracy theories, and we have how we see how that manifests into our universe today. We sit back and watch Star Wars, and we're entertained by good plots and good action scenes. And but there's a divine message when the Jedi. The divine warriors of the righteous ones who are Jedi, Jehuda I. We see how that reflects upon us in this dimension. Maybe not all of us can levitate, use the force to levitate objects and do magic tricks to entertain people or impress people. But there's a lot of things we can do in manifestation, in that manifestation of Ja Force, that life force, even more so through faith. In the, in the Most High Jah. True faith in the Omnipotent Father as well. As above, so below, and from within. This is what I would call true knowledge of self. Not just partial, but true fulfilled knowledge of self. Because you must deal with a true living God. Not a false God. Not an idol or a deity, but the true living Allah Hayim, As above, so below, and from within. The words of Yeshua himself, the words of Jesus Christ himself, as Messiah in the first advent, he says, I and the Father are one. I and he, and he and I, and I and you, that oneness through that, that oneness through that same Holy Spirit, Ja Force, that life force. So this is what even Jesus Christ or Yeshua talked about in his time. Once again, not Antichrist Jesus not that whitewashed, blasphemous image of Caesar Borgia, that tyrant posing is what they call Jesus Christ today. 
he was a Satanist. A lot of these so-called Romans, not all, but a lot of these so-called Romans were Luciferians and Seth Lords that pretended to be Christians, so-called Christian Catholics, and were not even born again to really humbly receive the true Christ, Jesus, or receive Jesus Christ into their hearts in a, in a genuine matter. Because anybody who calls upon the Lord, Anybody who calls upon the Father of creation, whether you call him Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahuwah, you call upon God the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ the Son, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua. I say, I and I, Lord, you know, I and I say, my black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But that's only because I acknowledge that, that contrast. I acknowledge the contrast of the true ethnic Ethiopian Hebrew Yehudi that Ethiopian Jew, in which Jesus Christ is. That ethnic tribe of Yehuda, or the tribe of Judah, versus the Romanized whitewashed image that, with that blasphemous image, and it's not about skin tone, because God is merciful, the true living Yahuwah, or Jehovah, the true God of creation, some call him the I Am, Ahia, or Ahia, he is merciful and loving. His salvation is for all people beyond the boundaries of skin color or race. There is a proper kingdom order, first to the ethnic Yehudi, or Ethiopian Hebrew Israelites, according to lineage, of the 12 tribes, the sons of Jacob, and then you have the righteous Gentile. You know, so, true Israel is a spiritual concept of the heart. <clears throat> when we strive to recognize the God within, sometimes we do wrestle with ourselves. So this is kind of how the pineal gland within even the carnal mind, that spiritual receptor kind of goes hand in hand with our spiritual relationship with our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Because um, sometimes we, we have to wrestle with God our whole life long, this whole walk, even this spiritual walk on this narrow path to bear our crosses. To bear that extra weight upon our stakes as we trod this narrow path. Strive first to love and keep Jah's commandments. And hold the true testimony of Messiah. We wrestle with him because we want to hold on. We hold on to our faith. We hold on to our connection with our Heavenly Father and our Elohim. See? It's when you let go. It's when you lose that strife with our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father... A God of love and salvation and mercy, and forgiveness, desires for us to overcome even our walk with him. He, he desires for us to overcome, just like Jacob said, verse 25. And when he saw, when the angel saw, the angel of the presence saw that he did not overcome him because Jacob would not give up. He would not lose his faith. No matter what happened, even through trials and tribulations of life, you get heartbroken, you lose your, you lose your spouse or your loved one, you lose your husband or wife, <clears throat> you lose one of your best friends, Father have mercy. You lose one of your children, you lose uh, another ex-girlfriend, you got your heart broken again, you lose your job, you lose money, you go through ups and downs and many trials and tribulations, you, know, you hold on. No matter what you have in this life or don't have for the time being, you hold on, you hold on to that faith. And that relationship with our Father, Bahasham Yeshua, the name of Christ. That's what it means to overcome, because we are the spiritual seed of Jacob. True Israel is the core body of Christ. We must not ever lose our faith. Hold on. We must have that bulldog type of faith when it comes down to it. Right there, turn in your Bibles. So-called New Testament, even though it's one testament, but the Tawahado, the one testament, the original Orthodox Christian faith, that fulfilled Israelite faith. But Romans chapter 8, verse 38 says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, from that foundation of Jah love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons. Neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, 
Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love or from Hashem's love. No power, verse 39, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, through the Messiah, Yeshua, our Lord. So you got to have that Jacob type faith. Israel you know, is a true Israelite, as a spiritual Israelite, as a, as a true Christian, you have to have that Jacob faith where you're going to hold on to your blessings, even when you're wrestling with the supreme angel, the presence himself, even with God himself, you got to hold on. So our father loves us. He's only testing us. The things we go through in this present life is meant to refine us and strengthen us. Don't let it shake your faith. Hold on to your faith. And our father will bless us. Hold on to your faith, brother. Hold on to your faith, sister. And your Father will bless you. As above, so below. Amen.